My first home console ever was a PlayStation 1, and while I'm sure that I was probably around 5 or 6 years old when I got one, I do still have some foggy memories of what it was like to game on one. Frankly, the system absolutely scared me because the graphics for some of the games just looked creepy. So even though Sony made a release of a quote-unquote uh, classic version of the original PlayStation 1 with 20 games preloaded, I haven't touched it until recently, literally the summer of 2022. So what do I think? Is it worth it? Well, people had a lot of negativity towards the system when it released a couple of years ago, but I want to know how I myself feel about it. So let's dive right in. So in the box, you're going to find that this is a very nicely presented package, but good luck preserving the packaging because everything is so tightly packed inside. However, you will find the unit itself, two controllers, a micro USB cable for power, but there is no power brick, so you will have to supply one yourself, and an HDMI cable. The exterior design consists of lightweight plastic, and this is a really tiny device. It's like if they had made a PlayStation 1 Mini, but there are some things about this device that almost make it feel like a knockoff. For example, the disc tray is obviously completely sealed off as there is nothing there. It's just there to look like the original. But the power button, uh, the reset button, and open buttons do work. Now, the power button does exactly what you would expect it to. The reset button takes you back into the main menu, and the open button automatically allows you to switch between games. Now, on the front, you're going to find two USB ports for both controllers and on the back you're going to find an HDMI port and a micro USB port. The controllers are just lighter than I remember. Then again, I had the hands of a six-year-old at the time, so that's probably why I, I feel that way. But they really do feel almost hollow. The buttons feel pretty good though, with solid feedback. These are definitely serviceable from experience, as I've played with these controllers for quite a while and haven't had any issues with them in actual practice. I think that they did a good job with these, as I'm sure that they just retrained these controllers to make them cheaper for this package. I just kind of wish that the wires were longer since you can't really play from very far away. Talk about 90s problems, I guess. The OS is extremely simple. You get to choose your preferred language and then it shows you the list of games that it comes with. The interface is meant to look like, like the original one, but obviously here it shows you a list of games. It's nothing special. And a very straight to the point software, which I do appreciate and many people will also appreciate this too. Now this system comes with the following games. Games, and I would argue that this is what made the system do so poorly, for the most part. I know that the $100 price tag isn't exactly enticing for what it is. It's essentially an emulator that you can't easily install other games to. But you do get games like Ridge Racer 4, Puzzle Fighter 2, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, Wild Arms, Battle Arena Toshinden, Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy 7, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, Oddworld, Rayman, Resident Evil Director's Cut, and Revelations Persona. So basically, this little thing is catered to someone like me. Someone who happens to like those stupid niche games like Twisted Metal, Intelligent Cube, and JRPGs like Persona, and Final Fantasy VII. But this system is missing so many games that made this system special to begin with. Games like the Final Fantasy Tactics games, uh, 8, 9, the Persona 2 duology, Mortal Kombat 4, the Crash Bandicoot games, Spyro, and so many more that I don't necessarily play, but many other people people do. Games that would only work for certain people. And this is kind of an issue. So now, when it comes to performance, you won't come across any issues. PlayStation 1 is one of the easiest systems to emulate in general, and this little guy can definitely emulate all of the games included in this package with no issues. I'm sure that it can definitely emulate any PlayStation 1 game just fine too, but sadly we are limited to the current game selection. But it's all really fun if you like these retro games as you can definitely squeeze a ton of hours into some of these and hell e even for co-op like actual co-op like actual sitting next to somebody else co-op that's really fun to have around too
I would say that a system like this is really cool for those nights when you have friends over and want to play all night long. Now, this is where a system like this comes in handy for the most part. So it is pretty clear to see why people had so many issues with this release. It's basically a $100 emulator that limits you to 20 games, most of which you probably won't even care for. This is totally understandable, so there is no way in hell that I could recommend this to everyone who wants to play old PlayStation 1 games because even if you like two or three games here, there are much better ways of emulating them and playing them. I would say that the real value of the system comes in the co-op aspect since you get to relive the days of ghetto too close to the TV co-op and that means a lot to a lot of people. If the game library doesn't make you happy, then why not get yourself the Retro Pocket 2 Plus instead? You can take your games with you as an on-the-go, emulate way more than just PlayStation 1 games, and it costs the same as the system. So that's what I would say to people who wanted more out of this system in particular. But to people who just wanted the most casual of experiences and is interested in even six or seven of these games or really wanted that co-op aspect, then this system will be worth the money to you at a discount. Even with this in mind, I don't think that you should spend $100 on it, but I think that 70 is way more reasonable. But this was a really fun system to tackle, and it doesn't really hurt to have something around for casual gameplay nights with others. So I can recommend it if you really want that aspect. So think about what you want more than what the public might say when it comes to the system. Because obviously this is to satisfy your nostalgia and nothing more. So there you have it. Do I regret buying it? The answer is no, because I bought it at a discount and I do enjoy gaming on it from time to time, so I do still use it. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. I do very much appreciate it. Um, now, I am going to be leaving affiliate links down to this product in the description, so if you were to use any of those links, you would be supporting the channel directly. So thank you so much for that, of course. And also, I did want to mention that the Patreon has officially shut down, at least for now. Um, eventually, I'm sure that it is going to to make a return but for now it is shut down and i wanted to give a very very special thanks to everybody who supported it all throughout you guys were really 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 amazing but there's so many things that i need to rework on the patreon that right now it's just not suitable really for people to pledge to it i want to say but in the future and also please make sure to follow me on twitch and on instagram and uh yeah links down below now with that said this has been francisco from tech summit thank you for watching and until next time enjoy bye bye